appreciate you joining us. That's what kind of a show we're having today. Somebody say, oh my. Welcome back to Jeff Kranange, <laughs> live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski, here with the prof, who's about to jump off his bench and run away. I tell you, the show is no doubt smoking. Mutahin Gunyi has showed up, and he's sparing nobody. Sit back, listen to what he has to say about this country moving forward. Twitter handles, at Mutahin Gunyi, at Kranange, Jeff, the hashtag. Tyranny of numbers. Mutahi, yep. moving forward, yeah. you've distanced yourself recently from Jubilee. Mm. Why? Uh, by the way, um, if I have uh, that distancing, is because I never was close in the first place. They said you were in the kitchen? No, I was never in the kitchen cabinet of Rokinata, for a fact. That, and you, you know him. You can call him and ask him. <laughs> if I was ever <laughs> in his kitchen cabinet. However, I must tell you this, is that this is the government of my generation. Yes. And as my father used to tell me, you never leave a generation. The boys that you got circumcised with, you stick with them. To the very end. To the very end. So another critique of the Jubilee government has to arise, and that critique will have to come from a generation younger than ourselves. So why don't you offer yourself to critique them? Because they don't seem to have people who can critique them. They have a lot of yes people in that kitchen. If I critique them, I critique them internally, one on one. But uh, if they ask me, I'll be more than happy to critique them, to give them my thoughts. But I will not, I will not hit out at them the way you incited me many times to incite Waiki Baki. And by the way, you need to I need to apologize to him on your behalf. For <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to give him a goat like you did to the Luo Nation? I would actually want to give it to him because the old man was right. But you're the one who constantly misled me <laughs> to believe that he was not. <laughs> Look at the roads he's built, Jeff. Yeah. Are they not built? Yes. Across the entire country. Absolutely. So when we sat here and we called him your uncle and criticized him, I think we were damn wrong. But our responsibility as a generation behind him was to actually criticize him and critique him where necessary. So if we criticize President Uhuru Kenyatta and we say SGR was a bad move, as some critics do, are we going to praise him later on when SGR is flowing all the way to the DRC? Uh, yes, basically. And that's the reason why I have, re I, I have rethought my critiques of Mwai Kibaki. I have driven across the entire country and I've seen exactly what he was uh, thinking when he put together uh, the infrastructure. And it is brilliant, it's good. Yeah. And I drove to Mombasa the other day over at, at Christmas with my kids and we kept on wondering what is this thing that is running across uh, the SGR? And as it's going you're having little towns emerging. So I think there's a sense in which he is accomplishing quite a number of things but there is a lot of political noise around him. So he is not able to articulate. Is it a good thing though, the SGR? Is it, is, is it going to be a game changer? Oh, absolutely, yes. SGR will be a game changer. You see, earlier on I told you about how the state in Africa was constituted. It was constituted around a railroad. It was constituted around the model of Cecil Roads, of having a road running from Cape Town to Cairo. And once that road was constructed, institutions to facilitate extraction had to be constituted. The church had to come and sanitize us, and the state had to also come in and facilitate that uh, extraction. So essentially, uh, construction of uh, a railroad, construction of infrastructure to DR Congo, to Uganda, to South Sudan, we need to colonize all these yeah. uh, banana republics and extract from them. <laughs> Speaking okay. of Uganda, yeah. it looks like Museveni is going to go with the French model of a pipeline through Tanzania for his oil, which will completely decapitate the pipeline from Lamu all the way part of Lapset. It's going to destroy Lapset. There has been a lot of there have been a lot of conversations, not only about the French model, but also the Chinese have uh, this uh, story about Mwapok, where they are to put together uh, a railroad from uh, Bagamoyo in Tanzania mm -hmm. all the way to Banana in, um, in DR Congo and Banana is right by the Atlantic Ocean. If you put that railroad cutting across the entire of our space what will happen is that you will cut the movement of goods around the Cape of Good Hope 
by weeks. And so if they dock at Banana and they cross over to Bagamoyo and they pick up from there going to the east, uh, you have cut, it's pretty much like uh, the Suez Canal uh, in many ways. And uh, when the French come into uh, the region uh, with their model, they are actually uh, fighting that Chinese uh, Mopok uh, uh, project and also fighting uh, Lapset. And I think, in my view, why don't we have all of them? The more the merrier. The more the merrier. Yep. But will Lapset make sense if Uganda is not partnering with us or if they're sending most of their oil through Tanzania? Because yes. Ethiopia has gone through Djibouti now. Yeah. They built a railway all the way to Djibouti. South Sudan is, as you call it, a basket case. Mm. Who does that leave? Uh, you see, Lapset in the first place did not have Uganda in it, even the Lapset itself. It is Lamu, uh, P, South Sudan and Ethiopia. So Uganda was never a, a part of the story uh, uh, from the word go. And in my view, I think Uganda is an economy, although 40% of our exports uh, go to Uganda. I think as an economy is uh, overrated. So, biggest trading partner? And we, we, we can afford to do away with them, in my view, I think. And if we do that, and we concentrate on uh, South Sudan, part of uh, uh, what we can get from Ethiopia, because they cannot do everything through Djibouti. Remember, Djibouti is uh, pretty much a colony of uh, the French, French yeah. in many ways. If we can uh, do that and then have this lapse that go all the way to DR Congo, we will completely bastardize the French uh, connection. Mm. Okay, coming back to Kenya. Mm. The cord lineup you mm. saw last weekend, uh, former Prime Minister snubbed with Tangula's presidential uh, big day. Mm. Snubbed. So, what happens now? Do they, are, they, are, they, are these people going to stick together or is cord cordless? You know, Jeff, I've challenged you many times on Twitter to do a poll. Yeah. And I would want you to do it. And ask the question, uh, who is your favorite uh, uh, presidential candidate in court? Up to 90% are Raila. Uh, the others are inconsequential. So for Raila to tell us that he's bringing some Muzungus to moderate uh, his, the appointment of a, of a court uh, candidate, I think he's lying to us. And I'm saying that because if you look at the historical pattern of Raila politics, it's always been that before the election, he is a team that is strong. Yeah. Uh, that's about two, three years before the election. But uh, uh, a year or so before the election, kaboom, he rookers all of them. You do remember that in 2007, he was never the candidate. Mm. But during the football uh, uh, match, I think, uh, the World, World, Cup, World Cup, I think, he put an ad and announced he is interested. And Kalonzo Mosioka was devastated forever. Right. So uh, this whole thing of saying that they, there will be democratic elections is nonsensical. And I think they should abandon it and just say Baba is the one and stop wasting political energy. Can he win? Raila Odinga will not win this election. I know his followers don't like it when I say so, but I want to urge them to look for an alternative. But Raila Odinga cannot win this election purely on account of tyranny on numbers. Mm. Yes. He can, doesn't have an embassy. Can he back somebody? Can they have a team, whether it's Kalonzo and Weta, Kalonzo and Madvd, Kalonzo and Joho, he, he will not back anybody. The message Raila is sending to this country is Raila or nothing. And if it is not Raila, it is Raila or coalition. And if it is not Raila and coalition, it is Raila, as David told us, it is Raila or ban the country. <laughs> that was David, that was what David what David was, what what, was implying actually. Who becomes his running mate? Who is the most eligible guy? My thinking is that to make Kalonzo his running mate is to waste time. Uh, running mate should be Wetangula. You think so? Absolutely. Even after snubbing him? Wetangula will be brought back, he'll be given a lollipop and he'll be a happy guy. <laughs> to lollipop diplomacy, he, he parted at the back. He told there was no problem, I had to go see Magufuli and uh, he'll be more than happy to 
to join him. And that's why I'm saying that the consociational model I'm talking about, a model that was tested in the Netherlands, has been tested across many countries in the West, is what we need, a model that can accommodate up to five. And that's the only way to go? It's the only way to go. To, to, to avoid any violence? To avoid any violence and to be able to get everybody uh, uh, in the, not only to bring in as many people as possible, but also um, to have up to 10 communities of Kenya, comprising therefore of 25% of the entire country, being involved in electoral competition. Okay, on the other side, Mutahi, yeah. looks like Jubilee now is riding a wave. Yeah. ICC monkey is off their back. Yes. But at the same time, the ICC is what brought them together, and that's what got them a lot of the sympathy vote. We're going to vote for these guys to show Ocampo and the ICC. That's off their back now. What do they do to prove themselves? Because let's, let's admit it, the track record for Jubilee hasn't been that, that great. Mm, mm. I, I, I think the track record uh, is there. It is only that they have not been able to talk much about it. I listened to the president's uh, speech and I was very surprised that actually since independence we had only uh, at independence we had only 3,000 yeah. kilometers. kilometers of roads and uh, since independence to 2013 there was uh, 11,000 which means 9,000 9, was made but in the last three years they've been able to make to do 3,000 uh, kilometers. Yes. Which means that uh, since independence to when they came to power, previous governments were only able to make 220 kilometers of road, but they have been able to make 1,000 kilometers of road every single uh, year. The thing is that I think they have done a lot, but they have not been able to speak sufficiently on what they have done, number one. Number two, they have not had a doctrine that coalesces all these achievements and gives them life uh, and articulates them in the eyes of the public. In Ethiopia, for instance, the Prime Minister will go and construct a stool, you know, a stool for sitting on. Yes. And he'll call upon the country and tell the country, behold a stool. <laughs> the whole country will gravel, gravel. The stool looks so brilliant, yep. Your Majesty. It is because there is an ideology, there is a doctrine that correlates the country together. But here we don't have that. And that's why I was glad to hear the president talk about the nationalist uh, uh, covenant. covenant. It looks to me like, uh, you know, he's a political scientist. So it looks to me... So, so he's like you? Yes, I, I like what he said. I say now the political science in the man is beginning to come out. It looks to me like he's read a guy called Thomas Hobbes. Hmm. And he's beginning to use that for purposes of weaving a doctrine that uh, can correlate all his achievements. So they need to articulate more. <laughs> They, they, they have articulated, but to articulate using dry statistics is no useful. Uh, to articulate, however, using ideology and using doctrine, that is what will sell. Yeah, yeah. 17 months from now, uh, what do these guys do to make sure they are re-elected? What's the one thing? Um, whatever they do, my thinking, is they have to go back to NYS. Is that right? NYS is a project that was inspired by God. You, I know you don't understand that because you didn't go to Sunday school, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I checked. <laughs> Father Abraham had many sons. <laughs> it, it, it's an idea about liberating young people. If there is one thing they can do is to give hope and dignity to the young people. And the young people are basically the ones who are going to vote 17 months from now. If they can capture that particular group and uh, drive them in a direction, if I if they can use the notion of the nationalist uh, covenant to preach to these people that we are one as a nation, and all of us are bound by this particular covenant, then uh, any achievements that they do in terms of uh, roads and all that might not uh, cannot surpass this. Yeah. What about arresting some of the big wigs, throwing them in jail, freezing their assets? That's the problem. You see what happens. Um, I have a hypothetical position. The reason why we've had a bloody last year regarding corruption 
is because the president came out and he fired five ministers. So when he fired five ministers, the country said, whoa, this man can shed blood. They said, we want more blood. And the whole of last year, we were asking for more blood. This time round, we need to move away from, the, we call that in political science 101, we call it the, the retributive order. We need to move away from that and go to the restorative order. Restoration rather than retribution is what we need to go for. And in this particular case, if you can create a dream for young people, if you can go to the ground, liberate them from the poverty of dignity and show them that this country is actually their country, that will give them more mileage rather than doing dramatic things like arresting people. He can actually arrest the whole cabinet today mm -hmm. and have them all locked up. The next thing they will say is that now we also want you to arrest yourself. <laughs> because that's the nature of group thing. Mm. Yeah. Restorative rather than retributive. retributive. Yes. Beautiful. You've got 30 seconds to go, Mutahi. That's your camera over there. Yeah. You're talking to the nation. People are listening to you. You are the mundo mojo, for lack of a better word. Go on. Talk to us. You want me to do mundo mojo thing there? <laughs> <laughs> Just give us... Remember when you used to write the article in the Sunday Nation? Yeah. You called it the last word. Yeah. You get the last word. I think my last word would actually be about the nationalist government. Mm. I think we are all bound together as a nation by this thing that brought us together. Some of us were not there when it happened. It was brought together for us by the founding fathers, but we all gave what we call tacit consent to it. And uh, this thing is greater than all of us. It's greater than uh, one uh, individual. It's greater than the ambition of all of us. Yeah. And uh, I think that we must do everything possible to preserve this country. Mm. Uh, yeah. one last thing before I let you go. Any regrets about working for Devolution Ministry, for NY Guru, for NYS? Any, any regrets? No, none, zero. No regrets at all completely. I can tell you one thing that so long as it worked, we came up with a brilliant vision. This is a vision that will liberate young people, in my own view. Yeah. If young guys can save 141 shillings every single day, because that is what they are forced to do, that amount of money can change uh, this country. I give you an example. Raila went to uh, Kibira, and he told them, I want to do a rambi for you. He raised 1.8 million. The young people told him, Every week we do five million shillings out of our own savings of one point, or you know, 141 shillings, and uh, it rendered him irrelevant. Uh, in fact, that is when he started fighting this particular uh, program. So I think we have a brilliant idea, and the noise that politics caused ended up barring that particular idea, and uh, uh, it is at the, you know, the politicians are happy it is dead. They've killed it through corruption and uh, 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 conversations regarding corruption. More the political engineering side of it than real corruption, in my view, because corruption existed bigger yeah. uh, in uh, other times. But if we can go back and revive that and have the young people in this country involved in a process where they are no longer earners of wages but owners of capital, mm -hmm. because that is the motto behind this particular vision, I think we can transform this country. Yeah, there's an old saying. Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Yeah. Teach him how to fish and he'll eat forever. Now this one, we are not teaching them how to fish, Jeff. We are showing them how to construct fish ponds. <laughs> that is being owners of capital, uh, not owners of wages. Real quick, yeah. if Anwai Guru runs for Nairobi, governor, and she asks you to come on board, would you? Jeff, you have heard me describe politicians in the past. I have called them the cream of the crop. Uh, I have called them a fellowship of thugs. I have given them all manner of names. Uh, for me to be described like that by myself, <laughs> I haven't become a politician, yeah. would be tragic in my view. Huh. So politics for me is a no-go. So. Okay. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. I'm out of my cave now. You can call me. I can call you often? Call me often. I owe you my book. And I will bring you mine as well. Deal. Yeah. Right here on the bench. On the bench. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks. All the best. Thanks. Say hello to Mimi for me. Mimi is uh, in Canada now. <laughs>
but I was, I'll, I'll say hello to you. <laughs> you do that? <laughs> yeah. Professor Mutahi Guni in the flesh, waxing lyrical, calling it like he sees it, sparing nobody. This man is shooting from the hip, and he's nailed it. He said, going forward, we have that covenant we heard about the other day. That's the only way we're going to stay together as a nation. Wow. Keep tweeting at Matahin Guni, at Quinanga Jeff, the hashtag, tyranny of numbers. Next week is a new week, new show, new guests, new themes. But the one thing that's always consistent are those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other. J-K-L. Every Wednesday, Thursday on Kenya's television network, KTN. Thanks so much for watching. Good night. Good luck. God bless Kenya. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Asadi Salam. You're welcome. <laughs> I, it was nice talking.